When you build your property portfolio, it's really important that you review it. But how do you go about that process? In this video, we show you how. So first on our list is rent. So you will hopefully be getting rent. If you're not, then the review is definitely worthwhile doing, <laughs> but hopefully you're getting rent from your properties. The first thing you wanna do is have a look at when was the last time you increased them. So if it's been a few years, you might be happy because you've got a great tenant there, or you may have just forgotten. <laughs> so you may want to address that if you're self-managing by having a conversation with your tenants, or if you're having a property managed for you by your letting agents. Now to do this, just jump on right move and have a look. Even if you increased your rents last year, doesn't mean you should leave it. Check, the market may have moved. Go on right move, type in the postcode, look for similar properties in the immediate area and get a feel for what property should be letting for. Now, if you're self-managed, little cheeky trick, look for local letting agents in those areas, call up and say, hey, I've got this type of property. If I put it on your books, what do you think I'd be able to get for it? And do that with a few agents. Now, of course, they may give you an optimistic viewpoint on the, the rental level, but again, it just helps you build up that picture. Just because you can increase rents doesn't mean you should. The last thing you should review when looking at your rent, how happy you are with your current tenants. If they're great tenants, then you, you want to keep them. So regular price increases may prompt them to look elsewhere. A good tenant is worth their weight in gold. The next thing you want to do is look at the value of your property. Has it increased or decreased in value? Over a year, a lot can happen. If you, for example, have property in Manchester, Liverpool, Leeds, Nottingham right now, then chances are the prices have increased in your area. And therefore, the amount of equity that you have in that property is increased too, which is good if you're looking at mortgages. Which leads us nicely on to reviewing what mortgages you've got on your existing portfolio. So take a look, you might have to dig through all the paperwork they sent you in the first place if you don't have this to hand, but work out what your outstanding mortgage balances are so you can calculate how much equity you've got. Also, note down what rate your mortgages are on and how long you've got till the end of the fixed term. It might be that over the last year, you've come to the end of a fixed term without you noticing and you've gone on to a reversionary rate, which isn't so good. Or it could be that that's coming up in the next few months and so you want to start talking to your mortgage broker and seeing what's out there. Another area where you can potentially save money is insurance. Take a look at the insurance you've got across your portfolio, make sure you're happy with it, and potentially if you've got insurance across a few different providers, consider moving them all to the same supplier because you might be able to negotiate a bit of a discount. But just having that annual check-in is a way of making sure it's still competitive and that you haven't stumbled into any problems. Next up is looking at the properties that you have and look at how they're behaving. Do your properties just tick over with minimal fuss? Hopefully that's the case. Or do you have some properties in your portfolio that are problem properties? And your property can become a problem property for a few reasons. First of all, have you got bad tenants? Now it could be your referencing, it could be your letting agents, or it could be that that's just the type of tenants that your property is attracting. Are you having to constantly repair your property? You know, is it past its sell by date? Is it just one of those properties that constantly needs work and attention? Or is it hard to let? You know, every time you put it onto the market, does it take multiple weeks moving into months to get it let? Now, happening once may be just bad luck, but happening every time it comes to market, well, then you might have yourself a problem property. Now you know that you've got that base of knowledge, you can start thinking about the actions that you need to take. So this isn't goals, this isn't what you want to achieve next year, that's a separate exercise. But this is more thinking about what needs to be done as a result of what you've just discovered. So the first thing to think about is who you've got on your team. If you've got problems or you've got things that aren't quite as you'd like them to be, is that because you don't have the right people on your team? So that includes your mortgage broker. Are they proactively telling you when you're coming to the end of fixed terms and better deals are available? Are they getting you the best possible deals or do they just seem to be placing you with the same lender every time? It might be worth switching if you're not happy. Also, your accountant. Have you heard from your accountant this year? Have they been responsive when you've asked for advice? Have they proactively highlighted things you should be thinking about or have you just sent them a load of stuff once a year and that's about it? If you're not getting what you need and you have ambitions to do more with your portfolio, again, maybe it's time to switch. You also might want to look at your insurance broker. You might want to look at your letting agent. If you do have those problem properties, then ask yourself, is it the property that's the problem or should the agent be doing better than they currently are? And finally, any builders that you've got relationships with, are you happy with the work that you've had done this year? Or do you need to be broadening out your network a little bit when it comes to tradespeople as well? You need to assess what work needs to be done. You know, things do need eventually replacing. So do any of your properties need any major wear projects undertaking? They may be quite obvious to you what needs to be done. 
You may need to dig a little bit deeper and have a look at the state of the condition of your properties to assess potential problems as well. And remember, if you haven't had anything go wrong for a long time, yes, you have been lucky, but eventually something will happen. Now, tax is always important because if you don't get it right, you're gonna end up paying too much. But more recently, with all the changes the government's put in place, reviewing your tax situation is so much more important now when you're doing a property portfolio review. Your tax strategy may tell you that it's time to sell some of those properties, that you need to stagger some of the sales possibly and do one a year, depending on your tax situation. Uh, will your repairs be seen as repairs or improvements? Again, that will change how you're taxed and potentially cost or save you money. So there's lots to consider now when reviewing your portfolio. You will want to speak to an accountant to be able to do that effectively and make sure you're operating with best advice. And finally, this is a great time of year to make sure that you've got all the resources that you need to keep yourself up to date because things change all the time. Going for over this stuff once a year is great, but you need to keep up your education throughout the year. So if your style of investment means that knowing where major regeneration projects are happening will will help you locate where you're going to be looking for your next investment, then there are lots of sites to help you with that kind of thing. You can Google it for the areas that you're interested in, but some examples are Place Northwest for the Northwest, Invest in Nottingham, there's loads of them, but find the ones that are relevant for you, sign up for their emails, then all the news just comes to you. Also, to keep you in touch with property more generally and what other hubbers are doing then make sure you're subscribed to the property hub magazine if you're not already go to the propertyhub.net slash magazine and for constant updates and inspiration make sure you're following our social channels we're on facebook instagram and twitter as property hub uk but make sure you keep on listening to the property podcast every week thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video there are two quick things for you to do first make sure you're subscribed to this channel and then go check out the property podcast wherever you listen